Welcome everyone back to uh, These Are Raf Times on Raf Child Records YouTube channel. Um, I'm Raf and this is one of those times where I tell you a story. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like I figured um, it makes sense to go back to how things sort of started, how I turned from a regular heavy metal fan to someone who got a bit more active in the whole thing like started to organize concerts started to organize festivals um which sort of ended with the um whole um label and i figured i'll tell you just like what i think in reflection was sort of the event that kickstarted this sort of change in my involvement in heavy metal and um yeah so it's like a long story about a uh, stupid macho behavior that actually led to something positive i think or something terrible depending on how you view my current lifestyle so without further ado um let's in get into that so yeah cheers all right Let's go back to the year 2007. <laughs> yeah, I'm old. <laughs> okay. So, in 2007, I just um, found myself in a situation where I recently ended a relationship I was in back then. And that will be important in the story. You, know, you have to understand that I wasn't as blind as I am now, but I was already pretty blind <laughs> and during that summer there was a festival near to where i live it was the first magic circle festival so once again it all comes back to manowar so yeah that time manowar announced a festival and said they play and it'll cost only 10 euros and everyone's like yeah holy shit it's like one hour away from where i live of course we're going there we're like all my friends and everyone's like yeah let's go there and then Manowar announced to do, like, a second day because the um, uh, response has been so amazing. And the second day would be another 10 years. And, I mean, still, it's, like, two concerts, 20 euros. There's also, like, bands like Gamma Ray, Storm Warrior, all kinds of other bands playing. So, sure, why not? Let's <laughs> let's go for both days. And then, Yeah, like, of course, we're going for, like, both days. Sort of. So, at the point, as I mentioned... I just recently ended a relationship and there was the usual, like, you talk to each other because you have to solve, like, pick up stuff and all that kind of stuff. So we talk to each other and my ex at the time is like, yeah, you know, me and my friends are going for both days. And obviously me um, in my wounded pride and everything like, yeah, of course, I'm also going for both days with my friends. Like everyone on my side was also like on board. Like, yeah, sure. Let's go for both days. And um, then a couple of days later, we talk again, and I talk again with my ex, and she's like, you know, um, we looked at the weather forecast, it looks like it's going to be raining on Friday, so I think we're only going for the one day. And me like, nah, I'm still going for both days, of course, I'm going for both days. And then I talked to my friends that were planning to go there, and they're like, you know, uh, we looked at the weather forecast, maybe... We'll only go for that one day. After all, we haven't bought the tickets yet. And I'm like, ah, fuck it. We're going, I'm going for both days. I'm going alone. And yeah, going alone to a festival is something I have done before and I've done since. And it's totally doable. If it's a festival, I know already it's not too large. Something like Keep It True or Headbangers Open Air, for example, is something I can totally do on my own. It's not smart, uh, but it's doable. But going to a new festival that I don't know the area, I've never been there, is kind of challenging, to say the least. But, you know, I was young. No, I wasn't that young. I was, let me think, 23? I think, yeah, I was 23, and I'm like, yeah, I was still stupid, though. Not that much has changed in that regard, so I decided to go there and just try it anyway, because I'm, I'm too, uh, I don't know, 
had to feel super male or whatever. Anyway, so I go there on my own. And my reasoning was it's really close to where I live. It's like a two hour train ride because it's a weird train connection. If I go there and figure out that it's too difficult for me to do that. And I'm, yeah, I can always just go back home and forget about it because, you know, it's not far. It's not like the end, the other end of the country. So I did that. I took a train, um, went from Marburg to Kassel, um, and I walked down the train station in Kassel to the platform to, for the next train. And there's a bunch of people sitting there, um, blasting man of war, drinking beer. And <laughs> you know, this is crazy because it sounds like this stupid narrative that man of war sort of push all the time in songs like um, Die for Metal or whatever. <laughs> it sort of worked like that. So I walk down, they're sitting there on the platform, they're blasting metal, and they're like, hey, you're going to the same festival, you want to join us to hang out with us? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I've got nothing else to do. We had like another half hour to wait for the train. And so, yeah, they gave me a beer and we just started talking. And funny thing is that for a while they didn't know that I couldn't see properly. <laughs> and... And they found out at some point and it was still super funny. And what happened then was that one of them, uh, so the group was two Italians, one Canadian and two Australians. Uh, some more people we sort of met on the way, but those are like the core group. <laughs> and it happened that one of the Australians, my mate Chinch, he had been mugged in London like a couple of weeks before and his ticket got stolen, that got taken in that exchange. But I had a ticket and in Germany legally I can take a guardian to some events and like, you know, I can take you in there for free. You already lost your ticket. But if you sort of, you guys make sure that I find my tent late at night, wouldn't that be a great idea? So that's sort of the deal. We just hung out together. We did stupid things. Bought beer at the gas station, walked to the whole festival area, <laughs> did other stupid things that we shouldn't talk about, <laughs> and um, go to the festival. It works perfectly. We settle in, we get drunk, we go to the festival, we go to the Man of War show. It's actually a pretty good show. I mean, it was fun. It was pretty cool. At the end of the show, something crazy happens because I catch a drumstick. I actually, the blind guy catches the drumstick because, yeah, well, it hit me on the head and I grabbed it before anyone else could. <laughs> but, you know, that's how I got a drumstick from Scott Columbus and I still have it to this day. What happens next, though, is more stupid because we all start, go back to the festival, to the campground. And, yeah, that's where I lose the others. They lose me and I can't find them. I can't find my tent. I spent the next eight, nine hours um, wandering across a half-empty uh, campground, drinking with all kinds of people at some point, um, like when it's already sun is up and it's like 6.30, 7.30 or whatever. <laughs> My friends, uh, like, uh, I get picked up by the paramedics who think that I should wear something warmer than just a t-shirt because it's cold and they give me one of these amazing silver like thermos like blankets and that's exactly when I run across my friends that we camp with and in literally that moment so I find my friends like seven in the morning I <laughs> I cry uh, you know I crawl into my tent to sleep at least like two or three hours <laughs> while the paramedics try to wake up my friend John who's sleeping in front of his tent and they're telling him to get up because it's cold and his answer was like, fuck you, I'm Canadian, I'm used to sleeping on the ground and yeah, <laughs> they just like shake their heads and leave and we had another like more like the next uh, second day was also super fun At some point we decided to uh, drop like uh, jelly beans into a bottle of Jim Beam because we were bored and it seemed like a stupid idea at the time but it got even more stupid later because one of us uh, he put the bottle and like a bottle of Jägermeister in the leather jacket it gets like super hot it's like 35 degrees or something now maybe maybe only 30 degrees but it's super hot and Actually, it didn't really rain on any of those two days. So in the end, I made the right decision. 
that, you know, puts those jacket bottles in his jacket and walks into the area and security guards don't find the bottles and we completely forget about it. And hours later, we find more than body warm uh, <laughs> Jägermeister and Jim Beam filled with jelly beans. <laughs> and let me tell you, don't drink that shit. It tastes terrible. So yeah, great days, those two. I'm completely wrecked when I get home, like on Sunday afternoon in the train. I meet like an old friend from school uh, in the train and he's like, what the hell happened to you? You look completely destroyed. Like, yeah, you know, we had fun for like two days. Um, but what actually happened with, at this point is that I stay in contact with those people, at least some of them, and I... Yeah, this will come up later in later stories, if I ever tell them. <laughs> but, you know, I we go to Wacken Open Air this uh, the same year in 2007, which is a lot of fun and a lot of self-destruction that year. Probably my most brutal, um, most destructive Wacken, if I think back. Yeah, must have been. So yeah, and then I decide to actually visit them in London to go and see Heaven and Hell, which is like basically, yeah, as all of you are aware, is basically Black Sabbath with Dio singing, and a, I'm really glad I did that, because it means I got to see more Black Sabbath with Dio shows before he died. But why this is important is that it sort of made me, like, turned me from someone who goes to a fair number of concerts and listens to heavy metal. Uh, it, I guess it gave me a lot of more, maybe self-confidence. I'm not sure if, it, if I should call it confidence, but it made me more reckless because in the end it turned out really well. It made me more reckless. And through that, this recklessness, which is not inherently good, I definitely, you know, started becoming more involved in things, taking bigger risks or getting more active, going to more shows, traveling more to shows and being more proactive and deciding to, yeah, in fact, if I want to go somewhere alone, of course I can just do that and forget all those people who talk and talk and then don't do anything. And that's, I guess, was sort of the uh, thing that sort of, started me on down that road and i think if i hadn't been really stupid and way too proud for my own good and gone there that first time i'm not sure if i'd ever turned into someone who put more more time and effort and energy and heart into all these um things and these like work and hobby it, and turns this hobby into something that's way a way bigger part of my life so that's the story of how i went to a, a festival um met amazing new friends and <laughs> caught a drumstick kept the drumstick but didn't find my friends all night and uh <laughs> still everything turned out well in the end and, um, yeah, I mean, I still call those people friends to this day. And as I said, some of them will turn up in other stories later, I guess. Anyway, that's it for today, I guess. I more like a reflective story kind of thing. I guess the next one will be more about, um, yeah, more coherent thoughts about the label again. But that's it for now. If you like the story, let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, like the video, you know, the whole thing that everyone has to say in these things. But if you have questions, if you want me to talk some about something specific, also write it in the comments or send me a message or whatever. And yeah, I'll talk to you real soon. Cheers.